Chapter 4, A New Alliance In the last episode, the Super Sentai Heroes and Power Rangers Heroes had a rough day. Jason, Trini, Kimberly, and Tommy were in the new base mentally tired. It was quite a day for them all. All that action really got me tired just when I thought I would be living a normal life, said Jason. Me too, said Tommy. It's like as if we're back to the command center and all, especially that Zordon is back, but he's in one piece as a man. It'd be fun to have Alpha 5 around. Kimberly can be seen borrowing Sota's guitar to play a song to ease everybody's spirits, despite the tension they were suffering from. So, may I borrow your guitar? asked Kimberly. Sure, said Sota. I will, said Kimberly, who began to sing down the road as she did in her MMPR in her normal voice. It's no surprise she got a new career as a singer, said Tommy. Zordon and Alpha 5 sat down with everyone, hoping they can ease their tensions as they were about to face the pain of battle. The bulk entrance brought Bulk and Skull, who had changed to dry clothes. After a secret scanning behind the scenes and finding out they had no superpowers whatsoever, they were asked to do some odd jobs. Well, this place is beyond the Terra Venture. Too bad you missed it, Skull. I can sure that there's a really cool doctor here we can work with. A real scientist, said Bulk. Bulk? Skull? said Trini in disgust. This is a nightmare, as she remembered her days with them were not very pleasant. Whoa, Trini, calm down, said Jason. Let's try to take a look at the observatory. I'm sure your camera can get something. Good suggestion, Jason, said Trini. Professor Machio got into the room and saw Bulk and Skull. Well, I think I can use two assistants for my work as a scientist, said Professor Machio. I am still doing some research on aliens myself. Aliens, said Bulk. Ah, Bulk. Maybe it's just another disappointment, said Skull. Not really, said Professor Machio. I, in fact, mentored the Bulk Engers. He's right, said Satoru. You guys may get along well, considering you wanted an adventurous job. This is phenomenal, said Bulk and Skull together, as they saw Professor Monaco's actual footage of real aliens and other stuff on his iPod. Which shouldn't be that big of a surprise to them. Bulk and Skull were soon forgetting about their one-time loony professor friend phenomenus for real funny genius. <sighs> oh, he's our chief, aside from just our mentor. He's the one who created the equipment, said Satoru. Now talk about awesome, said Bulk. That's right, said Satoru. You can have a lot of fun with him, especially with his hobbies of aliens. Besides, we've been through a lot together. I say we go for it, Bulk, said Skull. Somewhere in the new sky base, Tommy had met with his fifth counterpart, Asuka, who had managed to create a way to enter between Earth and Dino Earth with much less effort. It was time for them to meet each other face to face. You're Asuka, or Abare Black, aren't you? I wear a suit similar to yours. I heard you in a dream saying you will be the first I'll meet, said Tommy. I've been seeing you in my dreams, too. Wait, you come from the year 2005, where you come from? I wonder what's causing this disturbance, said Asuka. Maybe it has something to do with the United Alliance of Evil, said Tommy. It was nice of the staff to take me for a tour around the base. I'm impressed by this new establishment, after all. And I am glad you will get to fight with us, Tommy. It's no mere coincidence you are here. Oh, by the way, I believe some friends of yours wanted to see you. Her think her name is Kimberly. She's in the lobby, said Asuka. Oh, thanks, said Tommy, who wanted to take the opportunity to start their relationship anew. Kimberly was seen near the lobby, trying to learn a new song from this strange wor new world, and she was in the lounge area once again. She was listening to the Jetman song Korowa Tamigo, so sang by Takeishi Mihako. She had found it pretty surprising that she can now understand Japanese by simply being warped here. Tommy decided to approach her, seeking the answers he wanted so desperately all these years. Tommy, said Kimberly, what brings you here? You wanted to see me? Just like old times, said Kimberly. Tommy, but before she could finish, Tommy interrupted her. 
Favor for a fan, Kimberly, said Tommy. Could you sign this copy of your album? I decided to buy your fir your album the first time it came out. Sure, said Kimberly. I'm so flattered that I have a few fans who I can be really close to. I was thinking about that one thing all these years. Did you really meet someone in Florida while you were away for training? It's not like you'd just dump me like that, said Tommy quite tonelessly. That's why I wanted to see you too. I wanted to tell you the real reason why I dumped you, said Kimberly. He felt like she really had her reasons for not being straightforward with him that time, and he struggled with the question all those years. Tommy, said Kimberly truthfully, I never met anyone in Florida. I wanted to simply break up with you so I don't get in the way. You were a Power Ranger, and I wasn't. Tommy, could I have been so foolish to think that? Kimberly, it's all in the past now, said Tommy. But aren't you and Kat dating already? asked Kimberly. Truth is, I broke up with her too. But we have remained friends, but nothing between me and her can be rekindled, said Tommy. Besides, I'm single now, and available. Plus, I feel so lonely too. Well, me too, said Kimberly. You know, honestly, in my career as a pop singer, I have my fans, but I feel all empty inside. If you ask me, I've got some suitors also, but I could not answer them. I just don't know why. I want a man to love me for who I am, not my money and my fame. To tell the truth, I only want to settle down and be a mother. This could be my chance to get her back, said Tommy. Well, let's just take a walk around like old times, shall we, said Tommy, who was more than willing to resume an old flame in the past. I'd love to, Tommy, said Kimberly, who was thinking whether or not she and Tommy can resume their relationship. On the other hand, Skull still had memories of his crush on Kimberly. In his mind, he remembered himself always as the invisible man, the man that Kimberly would never notice at all. Oh, she noticed. She just didn't want you. Trini entered the observatory. She was drawing her camera to take pictures of the solar system. Jason was with her. I can't believe it, Jason, that I'm really in space. Literally, I'm taking pictures of space. However, my thoughts still linger upon my old dead brother, said Trini with a tear in her eye. You never mentioned him before, Trini. I never knew you had a dead brother, said Jason. That's because he died a year before we met. You met when you were in grade school. He died in the wild lands of Africa, taking pictures of a land he loved so much. I really wanted to follow in his footsteps. It happened one fateful day when he contracted an epidemic in Africa. He never recovered, and he died there. His grave still lies there from this very day. I went to Africa to complete his dream before I landed here with you, said Trini. That's very bad. I'm sorry to hear that, Trini, said Jason. You're doing what you can to preserve his legacy. Just be yourself. Your brother is watching over us. He gave her a tap on the shoulder. Trini was reassured. Thanks, Jason, said Trini, who went to the lobby to take a rest. Jason's mind was also his In Jason's mind were also his friends Leo Corbett and Kai Chen, two who he had worked with at NASA, who could either be lost in space or still looking for him. At the lobby, Takaru Shiva and Mako were suddenly surprised that they were going to have a pleasant reunion with their old friends they had missed so much. And with them was also Kaoru, who was with G and the Kuro. Tamba was also there, too. Princess, I mean, mother, said Takarushiba. Princess, said Mako. Well, we're here to help in whatever way we can, said Kaoru. Princess, but before Tamba should finish her words, he was hit on the head with a fan. Serves him right, said G. Takichan, said Genta. Genta, you're here, said Takarushiba. Well, Takaru, I'm here, and so is the whole gang, said Genta. I'm going to bring class to the cafe. It's regrettable that Paris is now under the control of the United Alliance of Evil. Maybe I should help too, said Takarushiba. After all, I discovered my cooking skills while me and Mako were training children at our dojo. It's a dream come true. Again, said Mako, who was only thinking about when they were gone. Takaru-sama, it... Oh, <clears throat> sorry, that's Ryanosuke. <clears throat> Toto! Nice to see you again, said Ryanosuke, in a rather over-enthusiastic manner that he slipped down to the floor. His loyalty is no doubt unquestionable. Well, Ryanosuke, no need to be over-enthusiastic. You've proven your loyalty, said Karu. Thank you, princess, said Ryanosuke. And not to mention pretty enthusiastic, said Kota. Besides, he would always be ready to stand up for all his friends, too. All right, well, it's time for us to cooperate, and I don't think anything awkward should be. I'll lead a team of seven instead of six, if need be, said Kaoru. Mako felt embarrassed about her previous disasters. Only through Takarushiba was she able to improve her cooking, but she still was never a master cook. Hey, 
Hey, new company here in our alliance, isn't it? Said Trini in a spunky manner. Is that a photojournalist? Paparazzi, said Chiaki in panic. Actually, I'm a photojournalist and I'm one of your crew members here. I do hope I can take pictures. Believe it or not, I come from a parallel world where you don't exist as a resident. I'm no resident here either, said Trini. This girl is crazy, said Ryunosuke, who suddenly fell down. There's no harm in letting her take a picture, said Takarushiba. Let's just pose. If you say so, Dodo, said Ryunosuke with his kabuki dance. It was time for dinner. Jason was not very happy with being pocket empty. Trini was also thinking about when payday will come. I have to admit we're pretty broke, said Jason. I'll admit that, said Trini. At least we're employed and we get paid in their currency. That's nice of them, said Jason. I didn't meet I met some guy who could talk to animals who said that our world is but a shadow of theirs, but in my dream. I wonder what's really the difference between where we come from and where our new world's friends come from. I have to admit, I was pretty freaked when I was visited by a ghost before this incident. I was in Africa when I saw that a woman's ghost claiming to be the first Yellow Ranger in Super Sentai history. She was a photojournalist like I am. She was wearing almost the same outfit I am now, said Trini. As for me, I was visited by a weird figure. He claimed to be the Prince of Yamno, said Jason. What was even funnier than that, he wore my first suit. But before that, I was also visited by a vision of a Red Ranger passing his powers on to another. When did that happen? We'll just have to find out what's really going on, said Trini. Tommy and Kimberly were in the same table in the cafeteria. It's been a long time since we ate like this, said Tommy. Reminds me of our days at the juice bar. Whoa, you could use chopsticks. Didn't know that. I thought only Trini and Adam knew how to use them. Well, I did travel to China and Japan, too, while I was a pop celebrity, back where we come from, said Kimberly. Let's just enjoy the food. Tomorrow will be serious train for all of us who have joined the Alliance. So how was your trip then, asked Tommy. China was a good place, and so was Japan. But I have no idea Japan of this world is where the Super Sentai exists, said Kimberly. That evening also, the Bowkenders had a pleasant surprise. Edgy had returned after his trip from Scotland. He had cut his hair short this time. Hey, Edgy, you got a new haircut, said Satoru. It's nice to see you guys again. Maybe I should be back here. I decided to cut my hair. Long as so yesterday, said Edgy. We do have the United Alliance of Evil to worry about, said Masumi Ino. All our enemies are probably going to return. And if they're coming back, so am I. I have to admit that Scotland is now under their control, too, said Edgy. Supreme Commander Ryu finally came in and said, Well, folks, we've arranged the rooms accordingly. There's male quarters, the female quarters, and the couple's quarters. Your rooms have been assigned already. I hope you all get some rest, because we're going to retrain our superheroes to defeat the United Alliance of Evil. Meanwhile, at the United Alliance of Evil headquarters, Radigate was thinking about how to destroy the Super Sentai forces. He can be seen thinking about past events. Looks like I got some pests to deal with and some new people to torture. People are dropping from the sky, and it looks like I have found some women to lust after after all. I run an organization, and I will soon treat like trash if, as if I care. All I care about is my power and prestige. The new Viren will be here on Earth, said Radigate as he was listening to the Devil's Trill. Just then, Florius had returned with Yamba of Darkness, Riwan, and Gaija. The questers were there, too, to greet them. What? I can't forgive what you two did to me, said Gaija angrily. Well, old man, we're now important bodyguards to the leader Radigate himself, said Guy. So you might as well try to get along with all of us, old man. Old man? Who are you calling old man, said Gaija. But just before he could say another word, Radigate blasted some projectiles at them. Gaija is here to help with us. That's very good. The high priest has powers that can be useful, said Radigate. Flurious, just as promised, you can be part of this organization with your new efforts. Oh boy, oh boy, said Flurious, jumping for joy. In What in it for me, great and powerful emperor? Would I do anything to help you in your war against the Power Rangers? Wait, who is this guy Ryuan, the one we are facing, said Gaija, angrily referring to Radigate. Silence, Gaija, said Ryuan. He is your master now, Emperor Radigate, the Lord of Time. Well, Gaija, you are now part of the United Alliance of Evil. I have formed this organization to help get rid of our enemies. I am your emperor, and just in case you think of not kneeling, take this. Gaija was forcibly down from the blast from Radigate's fingertips. I hear and obey, Emperor, said Gaija. Oh boy, I have to be careful not to attempt to overthrow Radigate lest he curl me into a ball. 
Oh, wait, I want to take over, but I have to be subtle, said Long. 